Okay, so in this lab, we need to configure RIP version 2 to enable connectivity between sites. And then we need to verify that the routers can ping each other's loopbacks. So firstly on router 1, show IP interface brief shows us the IP addresses configured on the interfaces of the router, including the loopback interface. Show IP route shows us that the router has no gateway of last resort set. It only knows about connected and local routes. The same is true on router 2. As well as router 3. The routers only know about connected and local routes. So router 2, as an example, will not be able to ping the loopback of router 1 because this network is not in router 2's routing table. This network is in the, the routing table of router 2, and this network is in the routing table of router 3. Now you need to be careful. These are class A networks. Show run shows us that this IP address is configured on the loopback of router 2. Show run on router 3 shows us that this IP address is configured on the loopback of router 3. And on router 1, we have this loopback configured. RIP by default does automatic summarization when you go across a classful boundary. This network will automatically be summarized when advertised across the serial interfaces between the routers. So we need to disable automatic summarization when routes are advertised by the routers. The core router is the internet router. Show IP route shows us that it doesn't have any RIP routes in the routing table. It does have a gateway of last resort. It does have a static route pointing to the internet. That's because the router was allocated an IP address through DHCP by the internet service provider, or in this example, by this DHCP server. So this router has DHCP configured on one interface. So it has a default route to the internet but it doesn't know about other routes internally. It only knows about connected and local routes. So let's configure RIP version 2 on the individual routers. On router 1, router RIP. The version of RIP that we want to use is version 2. I want to disable automatic summarization. You should be using RIP version 2 rather than RIP version 1. In the real world, we probably don't want to use RIP at all. It's better to use EIGRP or OSPF or other routing protocols such as ISIS or BGP. Now to enable RIP on interfaces on the router, we need to use the network command. Network 10 is a class A network. The router has the following IP addresses configured. This IP address is a network 10 IP address. So is this. So I need to type the command as follows. If I did type it as something like this, the router would automatically change it to 10. So let's prove that by doing that with network 1, which is the loopback. Type end, show run. Here's our RIP configuration. Notice the network command has been changed to 1.0.0.0. Show IP RIP database. These routes appear in the routing table of the router. The router only knows about directly connected interfaces at the moment. It hasn't learnt about routes from neighboring routers. On the internet router, we need to enable RIP on the several interfaces 10120 10124/30, 10128/30. 10 this is the reason that we need to use RIP version 2. We have variable length subnet masks in this network. We've got a slash 24 network here. So as an example, if we look at the routing table of router 2, slash 24 network here, slash 30 network here, slash 32 network on the loopback. 
So we need to use RIP version 2 because we've got variable length subnet masks in this network. VLSM is not supported by RIP version 1. So, Internet Router, Show IP Interface Brief. This is the internet interface. We don't want to enable RIP on that interface. We want to enable RIP here, as well as the loopback of the router. So, router RIP version 2. Default version is version 1. No automatic summarization. Network 10, 0, 0, 0. Network 1, 0, 0, 0. Show IP RIP database. This router has already learnt about the loopback of router 1. It's learning it from 10.1.2.2, which is router 1. Show IP interface brief. We'll confirm that. There's router 1's IP address. Internet router is learning about this IP address from router 1. So it should be able to ping the loopback of router 1, which it can. So that's good. On router 1, show IP route. This router has learnt about the loopback of router 4. Again, show IP interface brief on router 4 shows us that this IP address is configured on the loopback of router 4. So ping 1.1.1.4, ping succeeds. So router 1 can ping the loopback of router 4. Router 4 or the internet router can ping the loopback of router 1. We essentially now need to do something very similar on router 2 and router 3. So here's router 2. At the moment only knows about local networks. Show IP interface brief shows us that it has a 10 network configured on the gigabit interface, serial interface, and a loopback interface has network 1. So router rip version 2, no order summary, Network 10, 0, 0, 0. Network 1, 1. And it should be 1, 0, 0, even though the router will change it. But the exam answer is to type it in this way, even though the router will change it to the correct network command. This router has now learnt about the loopback of router 1. So it should be able to ping the loopback of router 1, which it can. And if I trace to the loopback of router 1, the traffic is going to the internet router. This IP address, which is configured on the serial interface of the internet router, and then it's going to router 1. On router 1, we can see the loopback of a router 2, the loopback of the internet router. Notice the loopback of router 2 is 2 hops away. The loopback of router 1 is 1 hop away. So ping 1112, trace to 1112, that works. So router 1 looks good. Save the config of router 2 while we're here. Save the internet router configuration. The last step is to configure router 3. Here's router 3. Show IP interface brief. We can see the IP addresses configured on the router. They are network 10 and network 1. So router rip. No order summary. No version. You don't have to type these commands in a specific order. You simply need to type them onto the router. Notice what happens if I type the individual IP addresses. So 10.1.2.10, 10.1.4.1. And 1113. Show run. The router has corrected the configuration and it shows as follows. I am missing version 2 there, so router rip version 2. Show run. There's my configuration. We can see the version is version 2. Automatic summarization has been disabled. Network commands have been corrected. So show IP route. We are now learning the various routes. Here's a RIP route for router 1. Slash 32 mask. RIP route router 2. Slash 32 mask. 
This loopback is directly connected to the local router. There's the loopback for router four. So we can ping router one, ping router two, ping ourselves, and ping the internet router. In other words, we can ping the loopbacks of the various routers. In addition, we should be able to ping these interfaces on the remote routers. So as an example, on router one, the ethernet interface has this IP address. So on router three, ping 10.1.1.1. That works, trace to 10.1.1.1. Traffic goes via the internet router to router one. Internet router has this IP address configured on serial 020, the link to router three. On router two, it has this IP address configured on the gigabit interface. So over here, so router three should be able to ping 10131, which it can. So that looks good. We've completed the first part of the task, which is to ensure that routers can ping the loopbacks of other routers. You may want to do some additional verifications just to make sure that everything looks good. So as an example, router one can ping itself, ping router two, ping router three, ping the internet router. That looks good. So that's the required tasks completed. Now we need to complete the bonus tasks and we firstly need to advertise a default route from the internet router to other routers via RIP.